Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week, we're concluding our modeling core video set. There's four in all, where we've been talking about some of the basic techniques that you can use in modeling objects in 3D Studio Max. We started off with primitives modeling in week one, where we said, OK, using nothing but primitives, what can we build, really? And that was using you know boxes and, and cylinders and chamfered boxes. And we built a, a basic, inorganic, architectural type scene. In week two, we said, all right, now that we're working with primitives, what can we do with Boolean operations? And we created a custom machined part, another inorganic example. But we're starting to introduce that arbitrary element, that special something that the artist can add um, beyond the, the simple primitive objects. In week three, last week, we talked about spline modeling, where we said, OK, if we can abstract away the mesh creation process, we can, we can limit the amount of uh, input that we need to provide in order to get the object that we want. And so we were creating these splines and letting Studio Max's modifiers build the mesh for us. Now this week, we're looking at polygon modeling, which is the, 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 the height of that, the, the very pinnacle of it, where you are setting the, the mesh and then you are making very explicit geometry. Now in our case this week, I want to show you uh, some of the basic tenets of using mesh smooth, so turbo smooth, mesh control, so that you can use that in your modeling pipeline. Now, same disclaimer as last week. Last week I said, you know, look, I'm only showing you some of spline modeling, there's much more to it. That applies double here. There are so many polygon modeling techniques that I couldn't possibly go over all of them. But they are out there, and I do encourage you to, to look for those videos. And I'll probably have more Monday uh, movies with modeling techniques in it that, that are based on polygon modeling. But today we're just going to be looking at, at controlling your mesh structure. So this is going to be kind of an introduction to, uh, to turbo smooth and to modern um, modeling. So let's have a look at it. I'm going to start off with this plain object. I've converted it to an editable poly through the right-click menu. And I'm going to take one of the polygons and I'm going to extrude it up. Now I've got that bound to a hotkey, but it's right here. I just click drag, click drag. And I'm going to apply a turbo smooth modifier. And we're going to see what that looks like here. So you can see what happened. It immediately tessellated all of these coplanar polygons. But for the ones that border this extrusion, it became smooth and it, it, it created this sort of slope. And pay close attention to it because this is the nature of, of mesh smooth. The slope is defined by any set of three uh, edges. So take a look here. One, two, three. After the smoothing, we see that here. One, two, three. Now we have this shape, but it's not what we want. If suppose that this is a uh, an iPhone or you know like a headphone jack, well then it needs to take on a very different shape than if this is a, a pimple on a character, on a, on an orc or something. And so being able to control the mesh is 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 paramount. So let's get to it. We need to use that that philosophy of one, two, three in order to derive the basic ideas of how we're going to control the mesh. So take a look here. If I move this edge, you'll see some of these edges down here moving. And so if we want to be able to control this mesh, we need to add edges in order to constrain that smoothing influence to a limited area. So let's let's go with the inorganic idea for now. Let's say I want this to be a um, like a headphone jack is a good example. So I'm going to select my outer edges here along the along the circumference and I'm going to hit connect. And notice what happened. It it it, it helped to constrain that smoothing. Where instead of going 1 2 3 it now goes 1 2 3 this half height. And so now it becomes vertical sooner. 
and we can use this to our advantage. So I'm going to click loop and I'm going to move this down. I'm going to make it a very tight curve down here at the bottom. And I'm going to select all of my circumference edges and I'm going to click connect again and I'm going to move this one up. And so now you can see I've confined what used to be a strange bump into something that now resembles what could actually be uh, a part of of some device, some some machine or something. And you'll notice that when I'm adding these loops, these edge loops along the circumference, it's not altering the the round shape of this. It's altering s sort of in a perpendicular way. And so given that, suppose that I wanted it to be a square. Well then, for example, I could um, select my edges here, just like this, and I could ring it around, click the ring button, and I could chamfer it. And suddenly it turns back into a box, because I'm adding back in more edges to constrain the smoothing. But I'll pass on that for now. I'll leave it like this. Let's look at some of the other uh, techniques that you can combine with Turbo Smooth in order to, to have better control of the final mesh. So I'm going to use a few polygon techniques here. So I selected Polygon Subselection, still on my top polygon. I'm going to use Inset. Now same thing as before, right? I'm, I'm constraining the mesh flow. I'm going to extrude it down a little bit. Inset again. And you'll notice that every time I do it, it's getting smoother. So ordinarily you'd have uh, one, two, three. But when I inset that polygon, it becomes a crisp edge. Nice crisp edge. Speaking of which, what if you find yourself saying, well, I don't want, I don't want even a little bit of smoothing. I want a perfectly, a perfectly creased edge. Well, funny, right? That's exactly what that uh, feature is called. It's called crease. And it allows you to create a perfectly straight edge. Now, it doesn't make much sense to do just one, so I'm going to select the entire circumference around this lip right out here. Click loop. So now I've got all of them. And as I drag crease from 0 to 1, it creates that nice, sharp edge. You see that right there? right there along the outside. Now there's another way to create a nice sharp edge like that as well and that's to have a discontinuous mesh flow. So take a look at this. If I, um, if I extrude this out one more time just like this and then I delete this top polygon the mesh becomes discontinuous. You see so along the z-axis the mesh is stopped because it goes one, two, and then it has nowhere to go. So vertically, along this edge flow, it stops and becomes perfectly flat. But along the circumference, the mesh flow is continuous. One, two, three. And so that's why it retains that round shape. This might be a little bit difficult to, to come to grips with right off the bat, just because it's like, well, what? Mesh flow? You know, what's that all about? But as you're learning more about polygon modeling, and I can't go into too much detail because I'm limited time, as you get more into it, you'll start to realize the importance of mesh flow and how you can use it to your advantage. This is just one example of it. And that's really the core tenet of polygon modeling, at least as far as TurboSmooth goes. It's about controlling the underlying mesh and creating polygons using, for example, Shift-Drag. I hold down Shift and I drag it. I can use it with any of the gizmos. Hold down Shift, drag, Shift, drag. And all these techniques are at your disposal. So until next week, I encourage you to try this out. If you're already acquainted with polygon modeling, if you're already acquainted with using TurboSmooth, maybe try getting back into it. See what it can do for you. Keep in mind all of the videos that came before this. This is the very end of the core modeling set. All of the modeling techniques that we've talked about can work in tandem. And polygon modeling should generally be your last resort. But then again, use whatever works best for you. It's all about your comfort as an artist. Again, until next week, 
Happy modeling. Don't forget to check back for another Monday movie. We'll be jumping back into our ordinary weekly techniques again. Um, and I promise I won't do a big set like this for a while. So till then, take care.